Welcome to First Word, striving to make God's Word your first priority today. We live in a society of people that think they're good. Medical professionals, religious leaders, and others have falsely encouraged this. In fact, I've heard Christian parents reprimand their children for lying to their teacher by saying, I know you're a good kid, but... Or even a father to his drunken son, Mom and I love you and know you're a good boy, but... I hope that those of you listening today will get a hold of what Paul is teaching us in Romans 3, verses 9 to 20. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we are already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they've become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave, and their tongues to deceive. The venom of asks is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. The way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Here in this passage, Paul is finishing up his opening section of Romans. In chapter 1, he explains the moral condition of those who reject God. And in chapter 2, he explained the true moral condition of the religious Jew. He did not show any favoritism. He comes to a conclusion in verse 9 that all are under sin, both Jews and Greeks. Then, as if he knew the arguments that people may bring against him, saying things like, that's your opinion, he begins to quote respectable, godly men. The first of these men is David, their honorable king, who was known as a man after God's own heart. He reiterated David's statement, there is none righteous, no, not one. He also quoted Jeremiah, Solomon, and Isaiah. If we remember in Romans 3, 2, the Jew was privileged to receive the oracles of God, not just the promises, but the judgments as well. What we need to realize is that Paul was not just calling on the quotations of godly men, but when he said, as it is written, he was referring to God's inspired word. So he was not calling on the ju- on just the authority of godly men, but it was calling on the authority of God himself. Indeed, none of us are without sin. No man alone can stand before God and declare righteous, be declared righteous without trusting in Jesus Christ for salvation. Thank you for joining us at First Word. May you recognize your sinfulness and turn to Christ for salvation.